Thank you for tuning in to watch Sixto. My name's Sixto. Today is a comparison video between the ISL 58 Islander and the original Seiko SKX 79. Both monsters. Both built well. And whoop, bezel off. Minus the this bezel turns a little easier than this one. You can see the comparison, obviously, when they copy the watch. They pretty much do it almost to the T, even how the little grooves are off. Off on the original Seiko, this one's almost spot on. Both wear well, obviously. Seiko does awesome work with it. They both have drill lugs. Both screw down crowns. This one supposedly has an NH36. When I took it apart, uh, because uh, I haven't greased the gasket on this one, and I just recently been wearing this one so I figured I'm also do both this one I, re I greased up the gaskets for both of them I have this little guy and upon doing that on the website for Islander they marked this as the NH36 the rotor has a 35A stamp onto it maybe a uh, a flaw on the on the rotor so they swapped that out for the NH35 but obviously you see the day date complication this is on a 7S26B as a Bravo <clears throat> hacking and hand winding on the Islander because of its NH30 series not no hacking no hand winding on the original monster which me personally, I'm okay with it because I got it on. Well, I always have it set to the date. Occasionally wear it in the house if it's not wear I'm not wearing it around. They both have the similar bracelet, obviously. Neat, but this one tapers a little bit more than than the counterpart, or is it the exact same? No. Seiko tapers a little bit more. But like I said, both cool watches. They both do what they gotta do. This one has a little bit more weight to it than this one. And here's a rotating bezel for the Seiko Monster. Line that one up. And here's the Islander. This one rotates a little bit too much. This one's a little bit uh, stiffer, but I'm okay with it because obviously uh, yeah, had they gotten played with. And this one came out of the factory with a little bit easier rotation with the rotating bezel. I heard some other people that had a little problem with it, but it still does what it needs to do, obviously. Both screw down crowns, one sign, one knot. Uh, sapphire crystal and acrylic crystal. Each got a little distortion in the dome. Let's see if I could get it. See, with the AR coating, you can see good. Without, when you tilt it, but how often you're gonna have it sideways? You're gonna have it on your on your wrist like so, like that, to see the time on the wrist. Got this tracer automatic with the tritium dials. So I forgot how much the Islander was going for, brand new. I think it was like 
$300 USD. And the monster back then, I think it might be going for that price. And now it's probably a little bit higher, give or take, on the ones you're looking for. I think the JDM might be going a little bit more because obviously people ex uh, um, export it from the from Japan. Obviously, because you can't really screw up the the dimension of a the Seiko monster because if you look at it from side sideways like this until they pretty much cop um they got the the same case design a little bit more hmm looks like Seiko has a little bit more of a detail coming down to the flange compared to the Islander you see how that has a little like almost like a little bevel edge to it than this one not so much it's just like a flat grind uh, flat grind so we're just like literally well me personally I'm just literally picking at straws with the fine detail the, the watch wears well you can see how like I said, the bracelets are pretty much identical, which let's try something. I would think that both would fit, obviously, because that's what Mark would do. He made sure that the the Islander Islander watches that he was copying fit the originals. Let's see. You're going to watch me struggle in real time. Oh, sweet Mother Mary. Slippery hands. Because I've left the case. I'm gonna. There it is. So here it is on the Islander bracelet that he provided, or that came with the monster. Look at that. Actually, looks pretty cool with a uh, with the mill. Something that it has. There's a stamp. Obviously, it has a Seiko stamp, which me personally, I'm okay with it because you got the uh, pin and collars on there. One thing that this one has more, it has two more micro adjusts compared to what? Three? I'm sorry, one more. I can't count. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Which one do you prefer? The, the ISL monster or. Or the traditional monster. Both have loom. Obviously a uh, fully loom dial. Versus the Seiko loom. So I'll splice that in. Obviously because I'm filming this still daytime. And. Oh almost had it. <laughs> told you you're gonna be watching me struggle I'm gonna leave all this in but let me know who which one do you prefer the ISL monster or the Seiko and what do you guys think about Seiko in general I know people Always have, always pull on it, make sure you got it on there. Because obviously Seiko has so many flaws with themselves, which we all know and some of us love, but you know. What, watch comp what great watch company doesn't have a certain flaw to themselves that we just don't know or love? Seiko with their uh, 
misaligned bezel. To their to the QC issues. Oh, come on. Oh, my AC decided to kick on. So, uh, each one. Start off with the monster. Which I found out that this guy has a diver extension. If I could get it. Come on, there it is. Diver's extension. And ISO. No diver's extension on this one. So let me know what you guys think. Honestly, both great value for your money. Let's see. So, until the next one. You guys are awesome. I'll give you a loom shot. Until the next one. You guys are awesome. Bye.